Hello everyone and welcome to the short video on properties of materials. My name is Jenny and I work for a company called Sika. We make materials that are used to construct buildings such as coatings that make roofs waterproof or flooring for hospitals and schools. Different materials have different properties. Some are stretchy, some are hard, some are shiny and some are sticky. When we are designing a new building material and we have to test its properties to check that it will do what we want. Imagine a glue that doesn't stick or a roof that melts in the sun or a paint that doesn't dry. We have lots of different pieces of equipment for testing the different properties of products and today I'm going to show you one of them. This is the stretch meter also known as a tensometer. So here we have a piece of paint and you can see how far I can stretch it. The machine will stretch it much further than I can in fact, it will stretch it until it snaps. This gives us a measure of how stretchy or elastic it is. The more stretchy the material, the longer it will take to break. So why do we need to know this? Imagine you were all in your school hall and you all decided to jump up and down at the same time. Your jumping would make the floor and the walls and all the different parts of the building move just a little bit. Now imagine a big heavy truck or a train goes past. That will make the parts of the building move a little bit more. But what if there was an earthquake? That could make the parts of the building move even more. If the materials we make don't have just the right amount of stretchiness, they could tear when the different parts of the building move. If the material that tears was on a roof, then it would let the rain in, spoiling whatever is underneath. Or if it was glue holding a window in place, the window could fall out. Making a new material is very similar to making a cake. If you change some of the ingredients of a cake, you will change some of its properties, how it looks or tastes. For example, if you add cocoa powder to a sponge cake recipe, the cake may look and taste chocolatey, but due to the extra powder, it might be too dry to eat. In the same way, if you change the ingredients of one of our materials, you will change its properties, making it harder or shinier or even more elastic. When we are designing a new material, we will try lots of different recipes until we get it just right. And each time we make a change, we have to test the properties that results from the different recipe. But we have to make sure that this is a fair test by only changing one variable at a time. We always use the same machine with the same settings in the same room. We also use the same length, width and shape of test sample. In fact, we have a special punch to cut out our test samples to make sure that they are identical in shape and size. Another way we make sure that it is a fair test is to measure the stretchiness of a sample that we have measured lots of times before. This special known sample is called a control and is used to check that the machine is working properly. If the tensometer measures the stretchiness of the control different to usual, then we know that the machine is set up wrong or isn't working. And we always take at least three readings and use the average. That way, if we do make a mistake, such as not loading the sample correctly, we will notice when the result is very different to the other two. So now you know all about the tensometer and how we use it to test the stretchiness of our materials, why it is important for us to test the different properties of our materials and how we make it sure that it is a fair test. Thank you for listening everyone. We hope you have enjoyed this mini video lecture and learning a bit about the science behind construction materials. For more information on the different properties of materials and some more of our testing equipment, please download our teaching packs on friction and how objects move off different surfaces.